Ahoy friends, welcome to Building the Alpha Dory. I'm Dan, and this is a project to build a sailing dory in the style of William Chamberlain of Marblehead. We're building from lines in John Gardner's The Dory Book, illustrations by Sam Manning. Today we'll be out in the shop hoping to get the port side riveting done. Well, let's get out there and get to it. I can still hear the uh, surf out there. And we're uh, you know, more than a day past the height of the storm. If you have a chance, jump on, uh, jump on my channel and uh, get a glance at the uh, the northeast uh, uh, videos I took the other day out at Cape Ann. Uh, you know, some of our prime cruising grounds out there uh, getting a little angry, not looking quite as hospitable and inviting as they uh, do on most of the cruising pamphlets and uh, tourist propaganda. Yeah, we had some uh, 18 to 20 footers rolling through out there with their tops dropping. And, uh, definitely a day that I was glad to have the boat tucked up in the side yard with the uh, with the tarp tied down tight supposedly out near um, out near uh, Provincetown or whatever they uh, started measuring some of these wind gusts going up to 94 miles per hour so that's uh, pretty wild. We didn't get anything like that around here, thankfully. But we got well into the 40s, and uh, yeah, it's pretty wild stuff. Boston radio stations were calling it Bombo Genesis. We just call them Northeasters. 
But, uh, <laughs> but they were pretty sure that it had something to do with, uh, with these bomb cyclones or whatever. And they, you know, very similar to uh, the perfect storm, which is, uh, You know, exact, almost the exact same time of year, within a week of when the uh, perfect storm kicked off, where, uh, you know, they made the famous movie about it and all. So this was every bit the perfect storm in 90, 90 plus mile an hour winds. That's uh, and it wasn't a wasn't a hurricane, it wasn't a tropical thing. Just something that formed off the coast here. Like I say, in the Definitely a good day not to be out on the water. I'm always spouting off in my videos, you know, what a nice day it is. To be out on the water, but you know, that's kind of why, just because the alternatives are pretty nasty. If you're in a small boat like a like an Alphadori or some such, you know, you'd either have her pulled up on the marsh. We're in some little secluded cove where should be drying out at the low tides anyway. And, uh, you know, you'd never be far enough offshore. You know, this, this storm came in with a day's notice or more, you know, building winds and uh, driving rain. So, not the sort of thing where you'd get stuck out in a small boat like this. So, I mean, if you had to go out for, you know, I don't know, save life or a limb or whatever, this wouldn't be a bad boat to have had to have done it in. If you had uh, four guys at the oars, you know, you'd have a chance of at least holding, uh, holding your own against a 25 or 30 mile an hour breeze. And, uh, you know, taking a few of the waves over the and whatnot, but you know, the boat would stay relatively dry as long as you were in pretty sheltered water. You know, you'd hate to have to go out through a uh, you know, out into the open, you know, like Ipswich Bay or something. But as long as you were up inside behind one of the uh, breakwaters or something, you'd probably be okay in a little craft like this.
Oh, yeah, I was uh, ended up out at uh, Lions Cove and uh, you know, I didn't get blown anywhere, but felt like I could get blown off the breakwater out there. It was just so windy. So I skedaddled back to the truck after managing to snag a few of the fairly decent uh, videos of the worst of it out there. Yeah, I've been out in some uh, pretty good sized swells, you know, probably six to eight feet or so. But, uh, you know, these were, these were say 12 to 15 and breaking. Yeah, and then it was some steep seas, you know, with the top five feet of the crest just rolling as if they were on the beach, just dropping the tops. Uh, not a not a pleasant place to be. As it ended up, there was uh, quite a bit of uh, slop and slosh getting into Wayne's Cove. And uh, there's actually no boats in there. Everyone called or uh, run around to, um, to the stone wharf. But, uh, and it was probably a good thing because you would have taken a beating. Sounds like it just started raining up there. Yeah, it's officially pouring. Come down.
Now I've often uh, wondered what would happen if you took this L shape and just blew it up and you doubled it. Doubled it in size, yeah, to 42 feet. And uh, you have a pretty decent little uh, spooner. Put two masts in it, of course. Should slide along pretty nice. And then you have to, uh, you have to go ahead and figure out some sort of ballast for it. Because, uh, yeah, you'd want to have some way of stabilizing it in a blow. Which I suppose it could be something as simple as, uh, as a quick creed and boiler punchings in the bilge. And then you'd want a, uh, of course you'd want a decent, um, You'd want one of those decent uh, center boards and a nice heavy plate. But, uh, yeah, should make a great coastal cruiser. This boat's about five feet wide, so double that would be ten feet wide, which would actually give you room for some uh, pilot berths on either side of the saloon and, uh, and a good sized little forecastle. as well as a small captain's cabin aft. You'd probably win your division every year in the schooner races. So. Actually, I'm not sure what what division a 20, a 42 footer would be in. I'm not sure if that would put you out of the small schooner category into the uh, into the medium size boats. But even so, this would be a quick medium size schooner. And as light as it is, vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, it's you know, not a heavy ballasted boat, not a deep boat. Oh, that center board, it would probably slide right along. And of course, you could still get up into some pretty skinny water. If you doubled the draft, then it would go to a little bit less than two feet, 22 inches, something like that. Yeah. That would be an interesting little ship. Probably something that might even be worth uh, carrying up the, up the coast to the Saginaw and Deep Trigada and you know show some of the uh, show some of the racing boats your transom.
course, if you're going to go that big with this boat, it might make sense to uh, Carvel plank it rather than the lap strikes. Uh, I suppose it could also even be strip planked at that point. Give it a layer of glass on the outside if you're looking for something that was a little lower maintenance. I'm going to stretch for a minute here, stand up straight, which I can do in the uh, opening to the loft. This is how you climb up into the loft. It's also a stand up spot. to be headed off on a uh, picnic tomorrow, bringing uh, the grill and And a, a little table to prepare food on and whatnot. And uh, the actual whole uh, deal of it is, is to uh, cut and split and stack and then sell uh, firewood to... Uh, to support a homeless ministry and then uh, we also cut and split and deliver firewood to 
some of the uh, guys who just refuse to put in doors and they just uh, can't see their way to getting out of the cold uh, for various reasons and um, yeah, and so we bring uh, we bring them wood, cut and split, and ready to burn. And that way they uh, you know can keep warm out of doors where they where they at. The city hasn't outright stopped us from doing it, so as long as, uh, as long as we aren't getting chased by the cops, we're gonna keep it up. Looks like uh, maybe one more rivet after this one. So there's the port side, third plank riveted, and uh, we're ready to move on to the uh, steer board side. See how that goes next video. Thanks so much for joining me. 
building the alpha dory and uh, yeah thanks for uh, all the comments subscriptions likes yeah, it's uh, really thanks to you guys and all the support that uh, I'm able to make these videos and uh, you know keep building this uh, keep this building uh, process uh, going online so anyway I hope you enjoy and we'll see you next time building the alpha dory